You're listening to Health Professional Radio. My guest today joins me from Sydney in Australia. He is Professor Tom Barodi. He's here to talk about some research that he's undertaking. Tom, welcome to Health Professional Radio. Thank you. How do you do? Very well, thank you. And, and welcome to Australia, I think, too. Well, I'm in Australia. Now, tell me, what's the clinical study that you've been involved with recently? Well, it is a study uh, where we are treating patients with Crohn's disease using a novel approach of antibiotics where we are treating the underlying uh, infection which we believe causes the disease. And instead of treating inflammation, we treat the infection. That's quite a new approach, isn't it? Uh, well, it is in general, but we've been doing this for nearly 20 years and uh -huh. developing better and better methods. I see. And um, in looking at, um, at Crohn's disease from this perspective of infection rather than an inflammation, over the 20 years you've been working on it, what has led you to this uh, point where it's um, a clinical study now? Well, we were doing patients' uh, treatments using antibiotics and we were organizing um, different types of constructs, different mixes of antibiotics until we found a system that seems to put most people into, into remission. And this, as we go, we learn quite a lot. For example, that if a patient's been previously exposed to antibiotics, they don't do as well as they, those who've never been exposed, which we call virgin Crohn's. Mm -hmm. So we're now are looking at starting patients on, on the antibiotics without having any other treatments such as prednisone, or mesalazines, the anti-inflammatory agents. And as we learned uh, from these experiences, who does best, we've refined the therapy into a product that can be put into a single capsule and is now multi-center trials are being run by Red Hill Bio uh, in North America, Australia, New Zealand, and Europe. Now, this clinical trial is just at the beginning stage. Are you uh, still recruiting participants for it? Is that correct? Yes, we are recruiting uh, in Australia, New Zealand, and Europe. Uh, in the States, I think they have so many centres. I can't speak for that, but I think they have really recruited quite a lot now. Mm. And um, I guess if you go into clinical trial, you have high hopes of, uh, of finding what I, you know, in my mind strikes me as quite a revolutionary discovery about Crohn's disease. If it can, in fact, put people into remission, with uh, something as straightforward as an oral antibiotic? Uh, yes, well, you know, Crohn's originally was thought to be caused by this infection, mm -hmm. uh, which infects cattle, and it's called Mycobacterium avium subspecies paratuberculosis, or we call it MAP, M-A-P for short. Mm -hmm. And this is back as, as far back as 1913. MAP was first described in 1895 in Heidelberg by two guys, uh, one of them was Yoni, of course, and, and one was a British fellow. And they found that cattle who have a similar condition have these bacteria in large numbers. In humans, they're very similar bacteria, but they're in very small numbers and they infect inside the cells. But nevertheless, the body attempts to kill these bugs mm -hmm. and the white cells smell that they are there and they throw all their inflammatory molecules at them and they start up a process that we call call inflammation and so when we colonoscope patients we can see redness bleeding polyps pseudo polyps they're called you can have holes being drilled through between the rectum and the skin called fistulae and bowel is stuck together or can be stuck to the bladder and cause a hole to go between bowel and bladder so it's an awful sort of disease which never seems to stop and you can't cure it just by removing it by surgery but if you do the antibiotic treatment, and if you're lucky to have hit a protocol that seems to work for, for, my, for MAP, you inhibit the presence of the bacteria because they divide very slowly, takes very long treatment, and so the inflammation settles down and you get quite dramatic healing, the appearances of which we've done about 460 patients. are The, the appearances are those of fine white lines in the colon where you know that a person had ulcers before and now it's nicely healed. You're listening to Health Professional Radio. My name is Wayne Buckfire. I'm in conversation 
with Professor Tom Barodi, who's uh, in Australia currently and is uh, uh, beginning clinical trials looking at a treatment for Crohn's disease involving oral antibiotics. And we've been talking about what the likelihood of that clinical trial will be to show some uh, what I think is probably fairly revolutionary ways of treating the disease. Now, Tom, a lot of our audience are clinicians and they'll know the answer to this question, but we do have some people listening who are not clinicians. How significant is Crohn's disease in the community? How significant? Well, Crohn's firstly has been increasing fairly rapidly since the Second World War. Some say it's now 15 times more common. And the significance of it is that we have young people afflicted by a condition which we cannot cure or control adequately, which influences their learning years. They are like put in jail and suffering. Uh, I mean, death is something that terminates disease, but this disease actually just debilitates you. And I've just had a patient with me who's lost like 38 kilograms and you know, he was a partner of a very large legal firm mm -hmm. and he looks like death warmed up. So from the personal point of view, these 40,000, 50,000 people in this country or almost 700,000 in the States are, you know, are, are such suffering people. Uh, and it's just sad to see them suffer so much with a condition that we have pushed away into being an idiopathic inflammation rather than searching for causes of the inflammation as the technology grew up in the 90s and, of course, now. Now, assuming that the clinical trials meet your expectation, um, I uh, just surmise that things will be dramatically improved for patients. Um, what's your expectation of how it will change things for patients with Crohn's disease? Well, we expect that the trials will be better than placebo, which is what you always want. Mm -hmm. But it is just the beginning because if you get trials to show that it is better than placebo, it actually will open up the belief system of researchers and doctors which have been at this stage closed mm. because in the past people have looked and looked for this bacterium and could not find it and the conclusion is that it doesn't exist. It's a bit like going out in daytime and looking up at the blue sky and saying, show me the stars. I can't see any stars. Well, then they are not there, are they? And that's what we have, the attitude we've had towards this infection. But there are a number of infections like this that are not detectable, but they're still there. And we've learned, for example, from Helicobacter, an ulcer disease being caused by chronic infection, that there is still so many more infections that we are to learn about and not to disbelieve someone who's starting to get results. So I think this is the beginning of a, a renaissance in improving and treating the infection, not just with antibiotics, but perhaps with some adjunct treatments that may be available, such as spe spe uh, special probiotics that can also hunt for MAP in the body uh, when we use antibiotics. Professor Tom Barodi, thank you for joining us on Health Professional Radio today. It's been fascinating to talk with you. I do appreciate your time. I realize you're very busy. My pleasure. Anytime. Thank you. Now, for listeners who have either missed my conversation or just caught the tail end of it, or indeed who would like to know more, there is a website you can go to that uh, has details of the research that Professor Tom Brady is conducting. That's at www.mapmycrones.com. So all one word, M-A-P-M-Y-C-R-O-H-N-S, mapmycrones.com. If you missed... The, uh, the interview, the good news is we have a transcript on our Health Professional Radio website. We also have an audio archive on YouTube and on SoundCloud, and the links to that are on our website as well. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. Thank you for joining us. My name is Wayne Buckler.